Jesus said this to the disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be kind of like this. Ten bridesmaids took uh, their lamps and they went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all of those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there won't be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and get some for yourselves. And when they went out to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut behind them. Later, the other bridesmaids came, and they also said, Lord, Lord, open the door, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I don't know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. There ends the reading. Well, I, uh, I decided this morning that I would uh, wear my glasses. I don't usually wear glasses. Usually I have my contacts in. But uh, I, I wanted to wear my glasses today because I, I was reminded uh, of what happened to me the very first time I got a pair of glasses. I was, I was actually in the fifth grade, and uh, it was in the fall that it happened. I guess apparently over the summer, somewhere in that summer months, uh, my vision was deteriorating more, more than normal. And so when school started again, I noticed right away that uh, it was a little harder to read the chalkboard up in the front of the classroom. And when the day came, uh, somewhere a couple of months into school, when everybody had to have their vision checked, I, I went in with my class, and they sat me down and had me look at the other end of the wall at that big chart. And the only letter I could make out was that very top E. Everything else was a blur. I was pretty sure at that point that meant I needed glasses. Uh, they were pretty sure of that, too. And so uh, later that week, uh, my parents took me to the optometrist, and uh, I was getting fitted for glasses. They put the big machine on. They said, you know, is it better with number one or number two? And we did that for a while. And uh, because my, my parents were very uh, considerate of my uh, fifth grade sensibilities, they also had me fitted for contacts, which was very nice. I wanted not to look like so, so much of a nerd, and so I got contacts too. But those wouldn't be ready for a while. So that day, I... Uh, was getting and learning how to put the contacts in, and they got my glasses all set, and I was very focused. We spent a couple hours there at the optometrist. And then when we got all of our stuff, we you know, purchased the glasses, and I, we walked out the door. And I opened those front doors of the optometrist and walked outside, and I just, right there, I just stopped. And I stopped because just outside the main doors of the optometrist was this giant tree. I think it's probably a, a big silver maple. And I looked up into that tree, and I was just stunned because for the first time I could see every individual leaf that made up that tree, all the thousands and thousands of them that were there. And I don't think that's something that I'd ever seen before. I was used to trees being these green blobs with a trunk, and all of a sudden there was so much more to it. I can remember that ride home in the back of my parents' van, just staring out the window, watching the grass go by, looking out into the distance to see just how far I could see. And all of the detail was just this wondrous rush. It was so normal for everyone else, but in many ways I was seeing the world somehow for the first time. And I think... That idea, that idea of seeing is uh, really what this story that Jesus tells is about. This story that Jesus tells, it's got, uh, you know, these, these ten bridesmaids, five foolish and five wise, but, but what kind of divides them up is uh, really their ability to see. They have their lamps out so they can see the bridegroom coming, so they can see what God is up to. You can imagine them all standing there, holding out their lamps, gazing out, into the darkness, into that hazy, blurry chasm, looking 
for something on the edges of their vision. And I think in a lot of ways, we, we like to talk about the church in the same sort of terms. We talk about the church sometimes as, as a light to the world. It's this light that if you are there, you can look out and you can see a whole bunch of things because the church lights it up. But I think I would like maybe to change that analogy a little bit. I think instead of a light, I'd like to think of the church as a giant pair of glasses. It does the same thing. It lets you see the world in a new way. So imagine this building, not as a building, but this giant pair of glasses. This place that we come in and we gather together, and it changes the way we see the world. This place that you come to so that you can see everything else just a little bit differently. Now, we don't always get that right, but every once in a while, when we gather here, we really do change the way we see the world. We start to see the people that are in our neighborhoods and around us in a different way. Each and every day, there are people who gather in this space, and then they go out, and they go to folks who are on the very edges of our society. They go to people who have mental illness, who are homeless, who are struggling with a whole host of issues, and they don't just see another dirty bum on the side of the road. They see a child of God. And these people go and care for folks who are on the edges of society. They volunteer in places like Beds Plus that care for the homeless in this neighborhood and the surrounding ones. Something about this place, at least when we get our job right, changes the way we see the world. That's, that's the goal of a place like this. And so when we gather here, our hope is that we challenge one another with different viewpoints and different ideas that each of those relationships that we build, each of those conversations we have, give us just a little bit bigger picture of who God is, a little bit clearer picture of the world around us and the world that God made. It can be incredibly easy to just see the world the way maybe a CNN or a 24-hour news channel does as all of these horrible events, one strung after the other. But when we gather here, when we look out from a community, when we look out from a church, we're called to see the world in a different way. To see a world where God is at work right here and right now. To see a world where God is doing things in our families and the relationships around us. To see a world where God is out there in the people and places we never thought God could be near. That's what we're called to do in a place like this. And we haven't always gotten it right. There are plenty of times in our church's history where our prescription has gotten a little off, where things have gotten a little fuzzy. But hopefully when those things happen, we, we know to fix the lenses a little bit and adjust things and bring it back to the vision that God has given to us. Even uh, a little later today, we're trying to accomplish a bit of that vision right after this service, we're going to have a, a huge luncheon and then an event for uh, Jews, Christians, and Muslims gathered together. We're going to hear three different speakers, a Jew, a Christian, and a Muslim all speak. And we're going to talk about uh, Jerusalem, which is a, a city that is holy to all three of those religions. But most importantly, we're going to talk to each other. And we're going to um, hopefully build some relationships and to learn from one another and break down probably some stereotypes. And in doing that, what we're trying to do is to get just a, a little better picture of who God is, of what it means to be a child of God, to with those different perspectives get just a clearer understanding of, of who we are and what we're doing here, what we are called to do. That's not always easy, but the miracle of a place like this is that sometimes Sometimes we gather here and we look out those windows and the world is clear, maybe for the very first time. Or we can see, if only for an instant, each and every one of those people outside of these walls and all of those places that God is at work doing something new and stirring something up. The miracle of a place like this is that every once in a while, we get to see God at work right here and right now, not in a story that happened thousands of years ago. And it's an amazing thing. So as we prepare to leave this place, as we prepare to go out, 
I hope that each of you, when you step outside of those doors, whichever door you choose to go out, just take a moment and look at the world around you and see if it looks just a little bit different. To look and see if you catch just a glimpse, however short it might be, of a place, of a person, of a face where God is at work doing something new. Because when we get that glimpse, when we catch just a small glimmer of what God is doing, we're forever changed. So as you go out this day, don't forget to look around and don't forget to wear your glasses. <laughs> Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for the gift it is to be here, the gift it is to share your love and your joy with one another. Show us where you are at work. Show us your spirit at work all around us. Help us to catch a glimpse of you. And may that glimpse transform our hearts and transform our lives, sending us out to live as you have called us to live. We ask all these things in the name of the one who came to us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.